example 8.2.1 part A. Sketch the following curve. So it's fully factorized already, which is very useful to us. If it wasn't fully factorized, then that would be the first thing I would try to do. I would try and fully factorize it. The reason it's useful when fully factorized is that we can then quickly see where it crosses the x axis, also known as the roots of the function. So here, when y is 0, what x values would make y equal to 0 here? Well, negative 1 would make the first bracket 0. And if the first bracket is 0, the whole thing is going to be 0. Because if the first bracket was 0, we'd have 0 times anything times anything times anything, which is definitely 0. 0 times anything, as you know, is 0. So the first bracket, negative 1. The second bracket, negative 2. Third bracket, 1. Fourth bracket, 2. So crossing the x-axis in four different places. No repeated roots here. It's also going to be a positive x to the power 4 term. We don't need to ex fully expand the brackets to know that. Just pick out the x terms, times them together, and also see if there's anything in front of the brackets as well. Imagine expanding the brackets, we would get a positive x to the power 4 term. That's all I need to know for the general shape. So the general shape is going to be something like that, like a, a bendy W. The key point is the two ends of the graph, the start and the end, they point up to positive infinity. If it had been a negative x to the 4 graph, there'd be something like this, with the ends pointing down to negative infinity. The two ends of the graph pointing up to positive infinity and going through the x-axis at negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. Well, there's a bit of symmetry here. On the x-axis, negative 1, negative 2. On the y-axis, 1 and 2. So it's going to be quite a symmetrical graph. And I realize these numbers are slightly in my way. Um, so I'm just going to start the graph about here. So minus 2 minus 1, 1, and 2. You don't need to put arrows on the end of the graph, and I recommend you don't. But I'm just going to put them on here just to highlight the fact that this graph does not suddenly stop. It keeps going all the way up to positive infinity. Put on our numbers our roots, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. Remember when I looked at those numbers, I noticed there's a bit of symmetry in the graph here. And also, where does it cross the y-axis? Well, again, that's really easy. When x is 0, sub it in to the brackets. First bracket is 1, second bracket is 2. Times them all together, and we get positive 4. And that's it, that's part A. Now part B. Once again, fully factorized, which is useful. But this time we see we have a repeated root. So when x is negative 2 on the x-axis, we're going to have a stationary point. Fully factorized, which helps us to figure out where it'll cross the x-axis. So when y is 0, what is x going to be? Well, the first possibility is x is 0. That comes from this first one. That could have been written as a bracket x take away 0. That might help you to see why x being 0 is a root here. Of course, it's not written as x take away 0 because it's neater to just write x. So we've got a root at 0, a repeated root at negative 2, a 
and then from the third bracket, the value of x that would make the third bracket 0 is 3, not negative 3, but 3. Before we sketch this, we need to think about the shape. If we fully expanded the brackets, would the x to the power 4 term be positive or would it be negative? it would be negative in this case. If you can't see why, then go ahead and start expanding the brackets. You don't need to do the full expansion, just start it, find the x to the power 4 term, you'll see it would be negative. So therefore, the general shape is going to be something like a big M. The key point is the two ends of the graph going down to negative infinity. Now, if it could be a big M with three turning points. That's the most number of turning points it could have. It's possible that it has fewer than three turning points. Let's think about this. Go to the x-axis at zero. There's a repeated root at negative two. And then it goes through the x-axis again at three. So we've got negative 2 over here, and there's 0, and there's 3. Notice I'm not measuring these. It's just a sketch. You don't need to get your ruler out and measure there's 1, there's 2, there's 3, there's 4, and so on. You don't need to do that. You just need the right shape. Scale and the proportions don't have to be perfect. So let's go back to this repeated root. So that means it's going to bounce off the x-axis negative 2. So it comes, bounces off, and then goes through the graph at 0, and through the graph, sorry, through the x-axis again at 3, heading off to negative infinity at the start and the end. So there's part B. Part C once again, fully factorized, which is useful to us. We can work out the roots, just like you can do with a quadratic. Factorize them, make sure it equals zero, and that tells you where it crosses the x-axis, also known as the roots. So same with any graph, fully factorize it. When it equals zero, that tells you the roots. So here when y is zero, x is one or three. And both of those are repeated roots. Because if we had written this as four brackets, then two of the brackets would be x take one, hence the repeated root. And the other two brackets would be x take three, hence the other repeated root. Now the shape, so imagine expanding the brackets, would we get a positive x to the 4 or a negative x to the 4? Well, this would give us a positive x to the 4. <clears throat> so the beginning and the end of the graph are going to point up to positive infinity. Let's think about the roots now where it crosses the x-axis. So repeated root at one and repeated root at three. So it's actually not going to pass through the x-axis. It's going to turn and bounce off. So when x is one, when x is three, I'm just going to do that again. So when x is one, when x is three, both of them bouncing off the x-axis. Now, a bit like all quadratics and all cubics, all quartic graphs will cross the y-axis. So when you draw this graph, it's important that you draw it actually crossing the y-axis. We can find that in the usual way. It's very straightforward. When x is 0, 
we get the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 3, which is 1 times 9. So it goes to the x, sorry, the y-axis at 9.